So what we want to do today is give a rather elementary and slick proof of Euler's formula. So uh, when we're undergraduates or in high school, we learn that there's this very nice relation between the exponential of a complex number. So here we have e to the i theta, where i is just the square root of minus 1 and the sum of two trigonometric functions with cosine theta being the real component and i sine well sine theta being the imaginary component there are many proofs of this result many of which are rather technical and or unenlightening uh, the purpose of this video is to discuss one of the simplest proofs that I've uh, stumbled across. So notice that if we wanted to prove this identity, it would suffice to show that e to the minus i theta multiplied by cosine theta plus i sine theta, that this is identically 1. So this needs to be true for all theta. Now, how can we do this? Well, what we can do is define a function which is f of theta being exactly this. So e to the minus i theta cosine theta plus i sine theta. And if we can show that its derivative is zero, for all theta, then that means, uh, so for all theta, then the function is obviously constant. And then it suffices to show that maybe f of 0 is 1, and then it will be 1 for all values of theta. Okay, so let's give this a go. We'll compute the derivative of f with respect to theta. So we'll need the product rule here, obviously. So we differentiate the first term, and the first term uh, brings down a minus i, and then we'll have e to the minus i theta, and then we leave this term alone. Then we add e to the minus i theta, and now differentiate the inside term, which would give minus sine theta plus i cosine of theta. Now what I'm going to do in order to simplify this computation a little bit is, is multiply by e to the i theta. That'll just make things a little clearer. And then I'll have minus i cosine theta. Then I'll have minus i squared sine theta. I'll have minus sine theta. And then plus i cos theta. Okay, so what does this give? Well, minus i cos theta will cancel with this uh, cos theta. And i squared is minus 1, so this will give us sine theta. And that will cancel with this minus sine theta. So uh, I've written something incorrect here. I should have uh, e to the i theta, f prime of theta, which we just showed was 0. And now if I divide both sides by e to the i theta again, remember the only reason I put that on this side was just to make it clearer uh, which terms were cancelling. So from this we see that f prime of theta is 0. So that's the first part of this uh, done. This is true independent of theta because all the terms cancel. Now all that remains is to show that f of 0 is 1, but that's rather straightforward. So let's let's do that. So we have f of 0 being e to the minus i is 0. Well, that's just e to the 0. Then cos of 0 plus i sine of 0. e to the 0 is 1, of course. So we'll have 1 times cos of 0 being 1, sine of 0 being 0, and that's 1. So 
what we've shown is that we, if we consider the function e to the minus i theta times cos theta plus i sine theta, which again is Euler's formula, well, it's the function you obtain from Euler's formula when you divide by e to the uh, i theta. We showed that that had a constant, uh, well, the derivative was zero and therefore constant, and that was true for all values of theta. And we then showed that it had a fixed that it had a fixed point at one. So it's not a fixed point in the usual sense, but f of zero is one, so that fixes the value of one at one. And that's all we need. That's the simplest proof of Euler's formula uh, that I know of. Okay, so if you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and consider subscribing if you're new to the channel. I will attempt to upload more frequently but my research has been very productive at the moment and that's the reason for my absence on the channel. Okay, thanks guys. I'll see you in the next video.